All right. Happy uh, Turkey Day. Happy Thanksgiving, folks. Uh, this is a uh, early morning for me. I'm in the West Coast here and I have a couple of hours before the family wakes up. They're all sleeping still. Uh, so I decided to do a stream to finish modding my Arcade 1UP Outrun cab. So you can see here that I have it one last time plugged up into the original settings uh, because before I get started, um, I wanted to um, showcase and, and let folks know um, about the difference in the car on the Outrun version. So I know we have a couple of folks that are joining. Um, so thanks everybody for their joining. Um, the uh, I'm going to share my screen on the actual cab that I'm running, my Star Wars main version of the cab, just so you can see the quick differences before I dive into modding everything. Um, so let's do a quick screen share, and I'm going to share my screen. Okay. All right. So, so this is my screen, and I'm going to go into my version of MAME on this build that has the original arcade, or sorry, the original Outrun game, um, just so you can see the difference. Um, so I, I just made a post in the global fan group um, because I got some comments that the game is different, that the cars in the game are actually different. So check this out. Oh, that's loud. I don't know if you guys can hear that or not, but I can hear it on my end. But um, this is the original Outrun there. And if you can see on the Arcade 1UP cab, um, it's using a different car. So that car on the Arcade 1UP Outrun is uh, looks like the 3DS port. They made a 3DS version of the game that I just kind of uh, did some research on because I haven't been the biggest Outrun fan. Um, but it's a different car in terms of the taillights. It's a different logo for the uh, Ferrari logo in the back. There's a slightly different spoiler as well. Um, so the shape and everything looks pretty much the same, even the same shape of the, um, the license plate that kind of has the, the little text there, or like the you know, gibberish. Um, but those are the major differences. So you know, they had to do that, I suppose, for, for the Testarossa license. Um, but I wanted to just kind of highlight the differences between the arcade one-up version of OutRun and then the main version that you're seeing on the screen right now. So hopefully you guys could see that really quickly. Um, I'm running solo today. So um, I can't see what's in the comments, but I'm going to jump back to my stream, stop sharing my screen, and uh, see if there's any kind of questions so far. So um, yeah, I didn't mean to have any game sound just to, to show the difference between what's going on with you guys. So uh, let's clean them like a mother. <laughs> That's That must be Derek, because uh, it says Facebook user. Gobble, gobble. What's up? Hi. Good to see you guys. Good morning, everybody. So I just want to see if there's any comments really quickly. Uh, crossing my fingers that you can get a second cab and try to network together, Ryan. So um, fortunately, I'm not going to be able to get a second Outrun cab, but I'm pulling the PCB out of this today. Um, so if I do find somebody local <laughs> that gets an Outrun cab, I'd be happy to take that PCB and see if we can, you know, network it together. So maybe maybe there'll be, uh, you know, maybe Bobby Vu will ever get one. He can he finds deals cheap on the cheap, so it might be a while for us to test the Easter egg, but. You know, I think a couple of other content creators confirmed this. I saw Ralph was mentioning this as well as Justin on, on their one up weekly stream that the, the Easter egg isn't something that we're going to be able to find on our own. Like a one up has to do a patch. They have to do something for us to be able to access it. It's not going to be something that you can just plug in and, and try it on your own. Even if you're able to network two of them together, there's nothing in the settings that would indicate you can do that without some sort of software patch. So um, I should stop trying to find it. Um, but yeah, hi, we should definitely do an Accord group. So, all right, so today's mod video. So um, we hopefully in the next hour, I don't want to try to go longer than an hour, but we'll see. So today's goal is to get in here, finish up modding the wheel, which I successfully did in my other stream. So I wired it up into an APAC, plugged it into a PC, but it works beautifully. Um, I didn't get a chance to install it on the actual OutRun cab. We were playing OutRun 2 but I was playing on my Star Wars cab. So it, it felt anticlimactic to finish the modding video, um, but it was a success because we did it. We were able to play on the actual Star Wars cab itself. Um, but there, <laughs> um, 
then then here it goes so we should be able to play it on on the outrun cap so i'm going to be installing that the pedals going to be installing a pc finishing with the back end of the mod so for those that are curious about just general modding um, i'm gonna, just going to go over the step by step of what to do um, if you were going to mod this cab or a similar gen 3 cab so i'm going to replace the the pcb with an, a vs display adapter i'm going to uh, splice the sound cable into the lvds display um, because there's a little adapter you can do that. Then we're going to install the PC, plug that in, and then I think, oh, the power solution. i got to run and grab the, the power. So I have a solution to be able to turn everything on and on modded cab using a custom inlet module switch, so I'm going to do that as well. Um, Outrun 2 runs on TechnoParrot. It does. So it's Outrun 2 SPSDX, so it's a TechnoParrot uh, version of the game. Absolutely amazing. It's one of the best games um, I play on my Star Wars cab often. Uh, my, my buddy Bobby plays it. It's his favorite game. If you haven't played it, it's, it's really good. It has a really good soundtrack. So I, I made a custom playlist, by the way. I, I'm, I, at the end of the stream, I um, should shut up and get going. Um, but I made a custom version of, of a playlist that has an OutRun playlist with all the games plus OutRun 2. So let's get started. I'm going to say goodbye one last time to the stock Arcade 1UP OutRun. I just turned it on and kind of Jerry rigged this on just to test it one last time so that I can confirm that the cars are different. But now that that's out of the way, I hope I will never turn this on again in its stock form. Moving forward, it's going to be my Kongs R Us race cade uh, with my build. So let's say goodbye. Bye bye. You're done. All right. So now that's turned off, um, I'm just going to do a quick, 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 quick recap of what I did on my stream two nights ago. Um, and so for those that missed it, I was able to take apart the back of this control panel wheel and wire it up into an APAC encoder, which is made by Altmark. And that's the APAC encoder that I use to wire up my yoke. So it was using the same principles of, of wiring up the potentiometers from the wheel and the pedals and then plugging it in to this little gadget here. So from there, I can plug in a mini USB cable directly into my PC. Um, you can see I haven't done any wire management. I literally have left this alone since we did it two days ago. And I just had to itch to finish it, even though it's Thanksgiving. So I'm thankful for those that are watching. I'm thankful for being able to do this. So for those that may have an hour to spare and kill, if you're not watching football or hanging out with your family, uh, thanks for joining. Feel free to jump in and, and ask any questions along the way. So we're going to take this install it back into our control panel um, as a USB port, and then we should be ready to rock. Uh, gobble, gobble till you wobble. Are you going to go the main route um, or something else? So somebody was asking here. OK, are you going to go main route for Cannonball Run for Out Run? <laughs> uh, I do have a playlist that uses main stuff. So uh, yeah, it's going to be pretty fun uh, going on in a little bit. I want to mention my good my good buddy Hi's here. Gobble gobble, one of, my, one of my good buddies. So thanks for joining. Hi, if you're still there, appreciate you joining in. Got a couple other folks from the different Facebook groups there. Uh, Chris Mart, C Mart, good, good, good. We're all here. <laughs> no one left. Uh, so for those that are on Facebook that are mentioning it, uh, you do have to allow access to StreamYard because I can't see exactly who you are. It just says Facebook user. So just a little FYI um, if you're using Facebook to, to watch the stream. All right, so I'm going to leave Hi there because I like looking at Hi. Uh, he's my good buddy, good buddy. Thanks for your support. Okay, so we're going to plug in the rest of these things back. Um, let's see, I had unplugged this, this start cable from my connector. So yeah, I didn't actually, actually I'm going to get rid of I didn't actually disconnect any um, wires. I didn't cut anything that was stock. I used all these wire extenders. Uh, and so if I ever wanted to, I technically could go back to a stock um, <clears throat> yoke or a yoke <laughs> steering wheel. Um, so that's the cool thing. So that's all wired up there. Uh, and then what I did with the pedals, the pedals are a mess. I mean, the pedals are here. Uh, they, uh, just so that to recap, there's two potentiometer pots here that plug into this relay circuit board. I had to pull out this relay circuit board completely and wire the pots directly into some of these long extension cables. So I just plug that in so I can plug in original outrun. And then this is my, my very long, colorful extension cable. So let's get this plugged in one more time. And I'm going to seal it up, plug it back into the cab itself. All right. Any questions in the meantime? Let me see if I can scroll down and see if there's any questions. Hey, hey, hey. 
it'd be nice to add some real light to the front of the car on the artwork drilling in some amber lights would be a nice touch absolutely i think there's a ton a ton of actual um you know cosmetic mod potential for sure so um i have some plans to do some small cosmetic changes uh, to the cab as they go along i think that's um you know always a desirable as a amount you know there's a couple of things like um Tyler from Arcade Graphic is going to be doing the the stickers, so that's the quick and easy update that you can do. Um, also, uh, I have plans to add in a back seat chair, like an entire chair, to um, to my my stool, my my bench, because my 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 butt is hurting after three days of sitting in this. If I have been sitting in it that long, I haven't been sitting in it, but I'm I'm, I'm pretty much hitting bare wood. So um, I plan to do that. Uh, cosmetically wise, I do like flashing lights though. I mean, uh, if you've ever seen, if you haven't seen it, check out my Macross Arcade mod. I bling that thing out with with lights up the wazoo. So I am a fan of LED lights and things. So I may find some ways to, to spruce it up. Uh, you know, another another potential mod, if you will. I know somebody mentioned like, oh, look, look at all these control panel dashboards and things wouldn't it be cool to you know put some gauges in there uh like little little known fact back in in uh in my youthful days i had a 99 accord coupe with a indiglo kit so i used to have light up dashboards that were really cool so i might do that maybe i'll make it look like my old accord uh, and, and see if i can do some uh light up neon lights in there but um this is the control panel that we're going to do. So everything's wired up. I'm just going to go ahead and start plugging it back in, and then I'm going to swap this around and start modding it up. Okay. It was me. All right, Derek, I see you now. See you now. Cool, cool. All right, cool. Are there any worries about the plastic pedals? They do seem pretty flimsy compared to a real set of pedals. Um, absolutely. I do think um, long-term-wise there, there, there could be some issues. Uh, you just have to be careful about stepping and pressing on them straight on like the more i've used them as long as you hit them straight on you're fine uh just be worried about any side to side movements or accidentally tripping on them if they're out if i don't know how you have your arcade room set up but that's that's going to be the issue moving forward um i wonder if i can just plug this back in too and right, we'll see how we can do this because this is going to go here i need to wire this back down I'm trying to think really fast how i should do this um can i just have it go out the back Maybe I'll just quickly do that, and I'll rewire it later. So I'm going to see my pedal through the back here, and then just have it go out the back of the cab. And then I'm going to install this back on. All right, let's get my aid pack wire here. It's going to plug in here, so I need this to go through the back as well. And then everything should be good. I tested everything. It was working two days ago, so if it's not working, we'll do some troubleshooting. So I'm just going to install this without the back just to make sure we have it on and then we can start doing everything else so let's go ahead and put this back in here 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 all right i should have woke up earlier so i could have uh gotten my tools oh i did i had the foresight i had the foresight to bring this with me i thought i left it downstairs all right so let's just slightly screw these in and again, I don't. I technically RK One Up doesn't recommend using a drill bit to drill these in, but I'm doing it for speed. As long as you don't over tighten it so it cracks, then um, that's that's what you have to be careful of. All right? Can I make this public? How do I make this public, Kyo? It's not public on my on my YouTube. It's not public. Thanks for joining. Um, so, how, what am what am I doing wrong if it's not public? Um, let me double check my YouTube account really fast just to be sure. Um, but yeah, we're gonna be going into this. Just check in what we're doing. Let's see, videos, view. Lots of people are watching right now. I'm still getting used to the live stream, the art of the live stream. So I just want to say uh, I have such mad respect for everybody that does this on a regular basis. 
because it is not easy to, to, to coordinate everything, especially doing solo. So like oftentimes I had a different guest. Uh, it's public on YouTube. Okay, look, it does it does say it's public. So I'm not sure, Keo, um, if you're seeing something else, but I just double checked and it said that I was public. Cool. All right, thanks thanks for the double check of everything. All right, so um, we're back in here. I have the paddle from the side. I still have it on the riser for now, just for me to have easy access, but eventually this is gonna drop back down. So this is not a permanent permanent piece. Um, so a couple of things I'm gonna be using. This is the VS display adapter. I have a three prong Y splitter that we're going to be splitting. This might be the wrong one. I need to get into a different version. This is the four pin JST connector that we're gonna be using to splice the stock sound uh, into this display adapter. So that's gonna be key too. So let's turn this around sideways. I'm gonna move this behind so that you guys can see what I'm doing in the back now. I'll try to get it in closer, answer any questions you may have about modding. Um, in general, if you guys have questions about modding, I have a, you know, limited experience. I only have a handful of arcade one-up cabs. I um, can answer any question about Star Wars because that's that's been my my jam. You know, um, some people some people call me the Star Wars mod king, and uh, I'll I'll accept that title because I don't know if anybody else has dived as deeply as I have into the world of Star Wars arcade one-up modding. But um, I do have some limited experience. Um, you know, just modding my TMNT with a Pi, and then I have a Street Fighter cab behind me. Running Quack Lee's Hyperspin Drive. Quack Lee, my buddy Quack Lee. We do a lot of good work together. Um, so appreciate that. Big shout out to my arcade wizards group as well. The wizards group is, is really cool. Good to hang out with everybody. Just got my Kongzorist Starcade crew. For those that are interested in joining my private Facebook group, you guys can go ahead and request that. Um, they have a, a group that's for folks that are interested in just my work in general. I'm gonna pull off this. This was the micro USB to um, Ethernet connector that did nothing when I plugged it in. I should probably pl unplug this completely as well. So no more power. We're gonna take this out. So this is the um, audio cable that we're gonna be splicing. I'm gonna be actually cutting this directly um, so that we can plug this into the display adapter. And then this is the marquee 12 volt adapter here that we're gonna be plugging in as well. All right, <laughs> can someone please post Chase HQ Road Blasters and even Super Hang On one day. Um, I will I will do my best to you know pr to provide some ways to, for folks to get it. But I have all those games on um, on my playlist, so we will be able to see see what's going on. So you guys will be able to check it out. But um, it's really it's really easy actually to to get some of those things. I mean, if, if you Google, Google like those ROMs, and you can absolutely just grab those from like cool ROMs or any place like that. It's it's really simple to Google. Um, you know, those games that you might want to get. So uh, very, very simple to, to grab that and, and have that on your own emulation rig. Okay, so that's set up. Let's take off the display adapter or the PCB one last time. Oh. Where did my thing go? All right. Another thing just to be careful about if you are buying an OutRun cab and putting it together. So in, in my haste on my unboxing video and I was screwing the side panels in, I noticed um, later on, Bobby Vu actually noticed it, that one of my dowels, the wooden dowels that you stick in, was um, a little bit longer than it was supposed to be, meaning that like the, the hole that it was supposed to be screwed in uh, was too short. And so since it was sticking out a half inch longer, the bottom of my cab when I screwed it in has a little bump coming out from where the wood dowel is because it kind of protruded on the side. So I was like, oh, I just ruined the side art on my panel. I didn't even notice it. So um, that is kind of a 101 building tip to double check your dowels. Make sure they all are going in. Otherwise, you'll be like me and you have a little bump, a little zit on your panel. So that's just something that I have on my side panel. All right, so here is the back of the PCB again one last time. There's two connectors that are going directly into the uh, the cab. You have actually three. You have your ground cable that's here. You have your kind of uh, the LVDS display, the adapter here, and then this is the power adapter. So we're just going to start unplugging all these. Hopefully for the last time, I don't see a need for me to, to use this. So I probably will just hang on to the OutRun PCB uh, in case in case we do find a future Easter egg or there's some way I want to plug this into something else. I mean, you can just plug this into like 
say you have a, a leftover kit, right? And you want to just plug it in to have it, and you can just map um, buttons. Well, that might be hard. I don't know, because you have to be able to use this, too, which is the original encoder board, too. So, I mean, we'll keep this together for potential future use. Uh, but otherwise, I don't foresee myself using this in the future. Because as much as I love OutRun in general, like... All the other racing games you can play are just so much more fun. <laughs> I mean, Outrun has its limited, limited fun for as much as it can do. Oh, the other thing that I I was I learned from all my YouTube comments is that this is not a a weight or a magnet <laughs> for it. It's actually uh, kind of I think it's a ferrite tube to help reduce the the frequency kind of um, interference with the PCB and and so. That makes sense. They're using a more powerful fan now, and this thing gets loud when it's running. Like this, this runs really hot and loud when it's just stock and running. So, um, I guess it makes sense they would do things to make sure it reduces the interference as well. You need an electric screwdriver, my friend. Your microphone will thank you. <laughs> Sorry, All right. I, I will, I will limit using this if it's really bad. Is it really bad when I use my my drill? I'll, I'll start using it by hand if, if it gets too loud. So, apologies for. It. This. All right, so we got the PCB. I'm just going to stick this on the side for right now, and we'll put that away. All right, so next up, we are going to uh, put on our VS Display Adapter. So we have this here. This is our VS Display Adapter. This is the typical VS Display Adapter that you can buy from Amazon. Um, this is about $25 or so um, shipped from Amazon. So it kind of goes up and down. And so it comes with kind of two things, your main board here as well as a connector to control like your on and off switch, all that good stuff as well. Um, and then you have your different ports here. You need a 12-volt adapter, which we're going to use the original stock arcade one up, your um, HDMI port, you have a DVI port, via uh, VGA spot, and then your sound input. So this is normally where you would connect 3.5 millimeter audio jacks, but this little four pin connector is where we can get power to our adapter too. So originally I thought you can just plug this in from your arcade one up. If you do that, the sound isn't going to be powered. It's not going to be loud enough. So that's why you need to use this display adapter port. And then we can mount this anywhere as well. So I, I may eventually kind of bring this up and then mount this up here so I can have it. Um, but I, I forgot to bring my um, my mounting heat. So let me go grab my mounting heat and my power strip really fast just to make sure I have that. And I will be right back in two seconds. It's bad when you talk and drill, OK? I won't, I won't talk and drill in a second. So what up? What up, Raymond? Another one of my buddies, gonna gonna highlight highlight a nobody here. Thanks for joining, man. Look at that guy, Raymond Jimenez, Jim Menes. Show him your baller skills. Tell tell him a story about rendition really fast while I be back. Brad, you're here. Can you join me? Let me know if you can, if you can join me and help me out. <laughs> Type in the chat if you want to join. I'll send you the link if you can help me out in a second. If you want to join for like thirty minutes or so, let me know. What does Brad say? I wish I could, but you're at your folks' house helping with dinner. <laughs> so you're watching. All right, no worries, no worries. I appreciate that. It was fun doing this, uh, you know, kind of kind of with a, a sidekick. So uh, here, I'm going to highlight highlight Brad. My buddy Brad helped me out last time when I was doing this. So I thought I'd go. I didn't want to bug people under holiday. I can't believe I actually have 30 people watching on Thanksgiving. So <laughs> I appreciate folks that are spending their time with me this morning. So hopefully we'll only be here for about another 30, 40 minutes or so, and uh, we'll get going. Let's be exciting. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Um, uh, in order to mount this to the back of your monitor, so this is a very small kind of cable here, right? So from here, um, originally like an, an old, 
old for Gen 1 versions, this was long enough for you to mount onto this kind of cardboard or the, the MDF portion of it here. Um, but now since it's so short, we got to mount it to here. So you have a couple of options in some of my early tutorials. I used to just cut the cardboard and use double-sided tape, make sure that, that that's not touching. And you have to make sure that this does not touch metal. If this board touches the metal at all, you can absolutely short it out. I've had several of my clients that accidentally just mounted this to the board uh, without anything. Um, so what we're gonna use is sticky PCB feet. So I have four, four PCB feet here, and then we're going to kind of stick it through the holes here and to mount it through. Um, the other thing that this comes with, and this, this should have came with it, is it in here? Uh, it should have came with a mini screw so that you can um, mount the the ground to the board as well. Um, did it not come with the screw? This is the other thing that I'm like, oh, if I do it live, I should have had all my my parts set up, but I don't I don't see where the little screw is. Let me, let me go run and grab another BS. Oh, there it is. Actually, it fell down. It's right here. All right, so this is the other thing that comes with it. It's it's just a nut and bolt that comes with your BS display adapter so that you can ground it into one of the little holes as well. Yeah, what up, Bobby? <laughs> Clean like a mother, yeah, yeah, yeah. To die for. Did I do a good Bobby impression? <laughs> I don't know if I ever do. Uh, just a spectator. All right. Um, OK, Brad was also saying, if you use the four pin connector with the powered output, you can adjust the volume with the control board buttons. Absolutely. So yeah, that's another good positive from having that spliced into that as well. Cool. Look who's in the house, guys. To die for is supporting me out on a Thanksgiving day. So appreciate you guys coming out. So, all right, let's finish finish this up. Let's do some modding live. Hope you guys like the uh, the modding live thing. I was like, if I'm going to be working anyways, might as well just kind of get in here and, and kind of um, test, test things out, tell people about what I'm doing in the back end. It's uh, a lot easier to live stream and talk than it is to record, re-record all my mistakes, edit, like I do tons and tons and tons of other videos. Um, so uh, this is if this is helpful, please uh, kind of comment. Let me know if you like watching these these modding videos. I can definitely do more because I, I have a lot of panels to work on. Um, so I was thinking of doing some weekly Kong Zerus lab sessions, if I will. Every time I do a modding type of thing, I call it the Kong Zerus lab. And then we'll be happy to turn on a live stream and just kind of talk through what I'm doing to see if I can help some folks out if they're interested. I don't know if this is entertaining at all. All right. I do also would love to get other modders out there in the community to kind of join me. Like with Bobby, if you want to get on your get on your computer, I'm happy to have you on right now just to kind of chat through modding. So if, if you're ever interested in, in kind of just joining me to kind of talk modding while I'm doing stuff and you want to just do this, I think it'd be cool to highlight some of the great modders out there in the community. There's a lot of talent out there. I mean, um, people say that I do tons of crazy things with mods, but if you look at Bobby's mods, you know, I saw a recent mod by Naremi. Steven Wolford, Steven and Jim Wolford, man, he, he took a concept from, um, you know, Bobby's template and made the, the most badass from scratch Return of the Jedi version of a Star Wars cap. So, I mean, super cool, man. Like, there's a ton of talent out there. So I'm really, really happy to be part of this community and, and kind of, share share what's been done so i think we need to highlight more of our modders out there so a lot of community is getting kind of smaller and you know you feel like everything's been done until somebody does something you're like oh i should have done that so man it's really inspiring to kind of see how people are working on stuff all right kong show with b <laughs> what's up cursed existence you and your cursed existence b is trying to make his own morning talk show yeah, I don't have banana chips to feed people though, so people will just have to make do. I will I will be happy to send some coffee though. If you want to do morning coffee. No. Ralph already has the the coffee talk. He does a great job. Um, was catching his stuff until until he lost internet the other day. That was kind of funny. Um but yeah, that was cool when they did their live stream and oh my gosh, so I'll I'll give props to to Ralph. He's uh since since he's Said he wouldn't be modding as much anymore, and then like he sent me a picture of him adding his transducer, not a, not just into his seat, but actually into the control panel himself. So talk about like a, it's like um, 
I, 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 I bought a transducer because of Ralph. I'm sure he's going to be responsible for selling out of transducers on Amazon. I only saw four left of the cheapest one. Um, but like, I, I, I have to test it out to see if it's like cost effective, like, um, like mod worthy. Because the one that he gets is like, it's like a $50 transducer, like the really, really good one, along with the amp. Like I looked at his price list of the stuff that he listed, and it was like almost like a hundred bucks just to do the sound mod and like I like I guess could you buy like a uh you know a decent PC speaker set with subwoofers and, and do something similar? I don't know. I, I, I have to be sold on the transducer. I've seen only seen videos. So later this this um weekend I will be getting my own transducer and then um I'll be able to test out once and for all if if it's worthy and worth it. I just realized that I was screwing in the nut and bolt and I was like, oh yeah I have to screw this into here. But then I forgot to attach the ground cable. That's that's me getting distracted for talking too much and not actually modding, so. <laughs> whoops, whoops, whoops. Boom, boom, boom. Yes. All right, so let's do this again. I'm going to stick this nut through, or the bolt through. All right. It's a neat little mod for people who just want to augment their stock arcade one-up rather than doing a full PC or Pi mod. Uh, you know, Brad makes a big good point. Oh, <laughs> I meant to highlight this first. It's a neat little trick for those that want to augment their stock arcade went up. I think you're right. Yeah, you know, doing doing the uh, the the what you call it? Uh, yeah, the transducer mod is is, is it sounds like a fun kind of easy to do mod where you just have to do limited wiring things. I know a mod can definitely be intimidating for folks that are brand new to it. I know I was. I know people ask me like like what's Funny question, I get this often. People ask me, like, what's what's your background? What's your tech background? Or, um, you know, do you have uh, coding skills? Are you an electrical engineer? And I say, I say no to all of that. I say I am just a fan of tech in general, and I love taking things apart to see how they work. And um, it's just, you know, basic engineering principles. But other than that, I have no formal engineering or tech background. I just like to, to know how things work and plug stuff in. So I started off as a regular community member in the forums like uh, in December, January, not knowing anybody, anything. And uh, this just kind of happened as people were interested in seeing how I did stuff. So it's kind of cool to turn into a little cool, cool, cool thing. So I appreciate the support that folks have given me, especially recently with OutRun. I didn't really expect this to take off, but the combination of being able to do live streams easy, not have to edit, that was always the bane of my my YouTube early career is the editing, that realizing how long it took to edit a video. Um, so <laughs> being able to do live streams and still have an audience has uh, been a lot easier. So I do appreciate the, the folks that have been joining live streams and button watching that. All right, let's get in here, finish putting this on. All right, so I have my kind of sticky PCB feet here. I'm going to mount this more towards the top because that way later on, I probably will drill a hole through here so I can have access to this um, right up top of here. Uh, there's, I don't know if there's like been a really good clean way to get access to this easy. Some people just mount it on the inside, but I'm going to mount it through a hole here um, so that we can get access to it if we need to. So I'm going to stick this up. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to, actually before I do that, I should connect it in. So this, uh, this VS display, the adapter cut cable side, um, it's marked now, but just make sure if you ever do this, the red cable line lines up on the left side of the pins, and you do have to make sure all your pins are connected in. It's just a standard LVDS connector, and then this is the power piece right here. So let's get that plugged in. Okay, everything's plugged in there. Those are my three things. Hopefully nothing's touching. All right, so let me do this really fast. Going up, I'm going to go up this way. All right, and I'm going to unplug this for right now, just so I can get space up here. All right, that looks good. All right, so I just mounted. I know it's hard to see up in there, but I'll, I'll turn this back so you can see it. This is where I mounted my display adapter using the sticky PCB feet, you know, so it's, it should be nice and secure. I only use three of them because the, the fourth hole that's on the board, I used it to attach the ground cable there, and then I attached the VS display adapter um, 
port, and then that too. So that that should be solid. You don't technically need this, but I'm like you know I just unplugged it, but I'm gonna plug it back in just so I can have easier access to it. So let's plug that back in as well. There. All right, and then I just leave it hanging for right now. So this one you can mount up here as well. So let's do that. So let's clean up a little bit in here, and then let's splice the 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 sound cable right now. Hey, the Rector Show is here. What's going on, man? Yay, fancy headsets. <laughs> These are my old DJ. Quack Lee's in the house. Q Lee. Oh, my goodness. Man, everybody's here. Editing sucks. I totally agree. Philly Chick. Hey, oh, my gosh. Jennifer Yabbit. She is the best Star Wars player on the planet that I've seen. <laughs> you're, just, you're, you're awesome to see. If I ever can have the patience to play classic games that long, uh, that's awesome. So thanks for joining. Check this out. So uh, Philly Chick says that she enjoys watching Magic. Just a novice modder. This is super educational. So I appreciate your support coming on. Um, but she is amazing. Check her channel out. She does some awesome Star Wars gameplay. Uh, and I, I hope you haven't hurt your GRS yoke yet. So <laughs> I know how hard you can go. I'm glad that that's built. It'll be awesome. Uh, all right. Cool. Thanks. Thanks, thanks, folks. Let's check out fancy headsets. Uh, smaller transducers go for about 15 bucks. That's true. Editing isn't that bad. <laughs> Dan. I have my two Dans here. Dan Mabbitt and Dan Moisel. Editing is... Dan, you do editing for a living, so of course it's not bad for you. Dan Moisel, thanks for joining us. This is just my, my early morning Thanksgiving. Happy Turkey Day. Turkey Day for everybody. All right, so um, let's go ahead and mod the, the, the speaker sound. So again, here's the stock cable for the 3.5 millimeter um, speakers inside. So inside of this generation speaker panels, it's three inch speakers on both sides of like right underneath the marquee that go right here. Um, and so um, they kind of wire independently into this. If you notice it, it it's not a single wire here. It's, it's a double wire. And so then it plugs into um, you know this 3.5 millimeter audio jack. And then this is something that you, you could plug into Kind of an amp or something but there's not enough power that's going to be powering those speakers so that's what i'm going to do now i'm actually going to cut these directly and split them into four wires and then connect them into these four four wire parts right here too so uh first thing i'm going to do is grab my fancy nipex wire strippers if you will and just strip a little bit more off of these and then i'm going to do that with the other ones as well so this is just going to give me a little bit more wire, exposed wire, to tie it all together. And then this is a simple way to use your stock speakers and plug them into any kind of mod that you have if you're going to use the stock monitor, if only if you're going to use the stock monitor. If you are planning on upgrading your monitor like Bobby Boo does to everything, to either the 20, 20 inch Dell FPB or a widescreen, then this, this mod will not work to plug this into a 4-pin connector because you're not going to be using that VS display adapter. Um, you would need to get a separate amp and power up your speakers. And you can plug this directly into an amp, too. So you can do that. But this, this is just for folks that are interested in um, you know, using, using the stock speakers as well. Mosel. This is how I say Dan. Mosel. I keep saying Moisel. Mosel, like Mo. Mo, Mo, Mo. Is that how you say it? All right, so let's cut it up. This is probably the only thing I'm going to be cutting on my stock um, outrun cab is this right here. So this is the cable. Everything else I've left pretty much stock. But here it goes. I mean, this is just an audio jack. I'll leave some space in case I ever want to redo it again. But there it goes. It's been snipped. You just got snipped. Snip, snip. And then here we're going to pull this apart to the two lines. All right, so I'm just going to expose this wire here. And then here. Um, I'm going to, to use this and, and carefully strip kind of about maybe an inch, inch and a half from this wire because this is the one where it has two additional wires sheathed underneath. So there's two wires that, that have um, you know independent wires on each of these. So I have to make sure not to cut too deep into them, otherwise it's going to, to cut the wire as much. So let's see if I can do this slightly. All right, cool. So I, I unsheathed and, and pulled off one side. And on this one, I have a black and a white cable. So that's one of the cables on that side. And so I'm going to do the same thing on the other side here. Let's see. 
about an inch, inch and a half, I'd say, just so you have a little bit extra space. Just slightly use your, your wire splitters. And it, even as much as the Nipex is good, like it's always good to have a, a real set of, of simple um, wire strippers as well for if you need to do kind of like stuff like this that needs more precision than the automatic one. So there it is. So now we split our sound wires. You have a white and a black here on this side and a red and a black on this side. So this is perfect. So when you're turning, talking about wiring this up into this adapter here, it's already kind of wired like mapped for you. So you have your a white cable on this side and a red cable on this side. And then you have the red, or sorry, the yellow and black on the middle. So essentially, this is going to map exactly like you see in the wires here. White will go here, red will go on this side, and the two black wires are going to map to this. So I'm just going to go ahead and wire this up really quickly, and then we can get going. So while I do that, let's see if there's any other questions. I love the community that's here this morning. Look at my buddy. I'm going to say you're my buddy now, Kia, because uh, you know, you've been supportive of me. But I, 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 just a little quick fact, if you didn't know, I've been, I've been a secret fan of yours ever since I had my Supreme uh, image on my Turtles cab. And I was like, man, this is the best best image ever. This is awesome. I love Kyo's work and Supreme's work. So, man, I've, I've been a secret fan of yours for a long time. So I appreciate your support and, and kind of giving me some YouTube advice out there. So I really appreciate that. Man, man, these wire strippers are so good. They work for these tiny wires before I wasn't able to use the tiny strippers on this. Oh, it's so good. So easy. So easy to strip. <laughs> Bobby, it's so easy to strip with these. You need, you need to get these, although I'm sure you don't need help stripping. You can do that all yourself. Bobby and his fitness tips. Gets me wanting to work out even on a Thanksgiving. Even on a Thanksgiving day. All right, so now we've stripped the wires here. I've exposed everything, and um, we're going to now just do the color matching the wiring. So we're going to do um, the white to the white, the red to the red. Uh, the other thing that I'm going to do before I do this as well uh, is I'm going to use this. This is a um, a set of um, heat shrink tubes, and so they come in all various sizes. I think this kit is maybe like I want to say like seven bucks, seven eight bucks. But they have such use for, for modders. So just to make this a little bit secure, I'm going to add heat shrink tubes to each one of these. But like after I tie it off, um, I don't. I forgot my my actual heat shrink gun downstairs. But I will just put this on and tie it off for now. And then later on, I'll go back in and actually heat shrink everything. Man, I'm already 45 minutes in, and I'm only at the sound. Holy crap! I need to stop talking and keep going. <laughs> I think I only have another hour, uh, another 30 minutes before my family wakes up, and then you're going to start seeing my kids in the background, like, Daddy, you're live streaming again? And uh, I appreciate people that, that kind of hung out for my two-hour two marathon of doing the first mod. Um, I have to give a, a huge shout-out to my family because my family is awesome. They've been putting up with me uh, doing this live stream stuff for YouTube. And they felt so, they they they're so supportive. They don't want to be downstairs making noise while I'm doing my live stream. So my poor kids, I didn't realize it. Um, I just installed a TV in the garage, but they went into the garage to watch movies inside of my car, watching the TV while I was doing my modding live stream. I felt super bad when I finished because I went I went longer than I was supposed to. Um, so thank 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 you, family. If you watch this ever, your family support is much appreciated. My wifey Caroline, my kids Kenny and Penny, good stuff. All right, cool, cool. cool. Just checking chat, see if there's anything else going on. So, is there no way to get an amp connected to these PCBs? Um, I like just like like stock sound wise, like yeah, absolutely. If you wanted to just upgrade like the sound only, like yeah, you you definitely can. Like this this um. You know the the sound output of the, out of the PCB will eventually kind of be what you plug into like an amp, and then the speakers, um, you know, will will take care of um, you know it going into the the amp itself. So if you wanted to wire speakers into an amp, you can do that, um, and then I think the stock PCB can just plug into the amp as the source material for the sound for sure. I think they can do that. All right, so let's just spend some time wiring this up. That was a question from the Rexer show there. 
Hey, look, look, Rex. I'm I'm using I'm using uh, Streamyard now, so get getting getting a little better at this. Ordered my first mod on Outrun, the RK Graphics Sega stickers. Me too. So if you haven't already, I think I have a link in the description. But the easiest mod you can do, and I knew I was going to do this right away as soon as I saw that that arcade one up sticker on the wheel, is to get an updated wheel logo and then Sega graphics that you can add onto the side of the cab. I think those will be easy, easy to do cosmetic maps. So check that out in the link description if you haven't already. They're super cheap. It's only like three bucks for a sticker. Um, so I thought it was a really good deal to to get those. So make sure you check out arcade graphics to to grab those. Tyler's really cool, so yeah, get that, get that. And I have, I have to talk, I have to consult with Bobby later. I know he already got his own racing wheels or racing seat for his 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 chair, but I I have a I have a cruising Exotica chair behind me that I'm going to be um, trying to install. So I'll see it, see it over there. See that giant like gray thing back there? That's a cruising Exotica bucket seat from an arcade. I won from an auction a couple of months ago. Uh, before they ever announced outright, I was like, I'm going to make my own racing cab, and this is going to be my bucket seat. And I was like, all right. And then I, it was just sitting in my, my, my spare area in my garage for a long time. And I was like, man. And then finally it came. I was like, oh, this would be perfect to install on here. I think it will be great to have a backing to the outright cab and then raise up the front pedal a little bit more. So that's the ultimate plan to mod the actual seat itself so that we can have a backrest sitting down. And I know there's other options out there. Like I bet I bet Derek is watching. I was like, you fool, you bought that that racing kind of pedestal thing already. I did. I had the same little mini racing rig, so I could absolutely build that. But there's something about having like a dedicated cab. And then, you know, I, I know I could I don't have the skills to build a full size one. Um, but you know the benefit of, of getting this arcade one up is like I'm I'm in my upstairs den on carpet, right? And there's no way you can get a full size racing cab up the stairs into like you know a little small den area wherever your arcade is, right? Like the portability of arcade one up is what makes it so beautiful. So that's that's why I was excited to get this to have it kind of matching my other arcades versus trying to do something else where I had to build my own. Um, so that's the appeal for me. Like I'm happy that I bought this mod and or this cab. Like I was I was so excited when it first came out because it was a unique control panel. It was right up my alley. I'm I'm all about having at least a single cab for every type of game out there. Um, so my next big category of gun of games that I don't have yet is the gun game. So gotta get with Brad. All right. Cool. All right, StreamYard's easier than OBS. Not as many options, but chat is great. All right. Ooh, so he says, this is a great seat. My dream would be an initial D3. Sake of rally seat, those are so comfy. Um, yeah, there's so many options you can do for seats. All right, cool. So I did it. I, I, I spliced everything up into this four-pin connector. And the last thing I'm going to do is plug this into the actual VS display adapter here. So now my sound is complete. My video is complete. Um, um, I have to, I have a three-way splitter connector that I'm going to use for the, um, for the, the marquee. So I'll show you what I do in just a second and I'll bring, bring some, some tools out here. And the last thing I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to install the power. My, I'm going to show you guys a sneak peek about what I do for powering up my cab with like a one power switch solution. Um, and so let me, let me run and grab I have two pieces of information, and then I will be right back. So in the meantime, I will I will leave you with this. <laughs> Derek, tell them. Tell them why. All right. 
backrest all the way. All right, looking out, so what else we have in here? Okay, I agree with the portability about what's going on. Okay, cool. We're getting more people that are joining the stream. So I appreciate folks that are joining in. We're almost at 50 folks that are joining to see me play around with stuff. Uh, <laughs> tell them why you love scans, why you guys, that's why I love the stands you got. Oh, that's, I thought I, I thought you said, like, I don't know why you, you guys love this stuff. <laughs> um, cool. I'm going to hide some of this stuff now and just get into power stuff. All right. So um, this is what I do in terms of a power solution for the marquee. So the marquee itself, let me turn this back this way so you can see. The stock marquee is a smaller 12-volt adapter than what you would normally see. So normally, like, a 12-volt adapter size is, is this, this larger, I think it's like a 5-millimeter kind of mail port. And this is a, and I think it's almost like a 3.5-millimeter port as well. But it's it's not like the audio jack. It's, it's a 12-volt adapter size. Um, and then it's a, it's a mail connector. So, like... Plugging in this into the stuff, a lot of times when you have, um, you know, a connection, you usually have a female port, so you can plug in one of these standard male connectors. So you have two options that you can do in here. Um, I was, shoot, I didn't forget. That. But um, one of the options is that there is a, there is a, a um, I'll leave a link to it. You can buy an extender um, adapter. So there's two pieces you can buy. You can, if you, if you don't want to do any splicing or wiring, you can buy this. This is a female adapter or like, so a, a, a female to female adapter that will plug into here. So now it can accept a, a male adapter. And then there's one more adapter that you can plug this into. That's going to change it to the right size setting here. I forgot to bring it, but, um, I, I will leave a link eventually to the, to the, to there. So if you don't want to do any splicing, I think they're about five or six bucks each. So, I mean, you do have to spend some money to like kind of plug them together. Um, so that's that's an option that you can do. What I normally do, and this is if, you, if you're comfortable with wiring and splicing stuff, um, there are these um, here, this. There's all these, this female adapter here um, that, that comes in this 10 pack in here. Let's see if I can just open this up so you can see it. Uh, these. These are also something that you, if, if you're comfortable with just basic splicing and tying the wires together, it, it looks like this. So it comes with a 10 pack and I think this is a 10 pack of like seven bucks. So you can do this for any of the other cabs you have. It just comes like this and it has two little terminals that come out of it. And if you cut one of these wires here, it's just gonna have a black and a red cable inside and so you just need to attach the black to the long one and the red to this one using some like small spade connectors and then i heat shrink tube it and so now i have a dedicated female connector port and my two male ports here so technically for this mod i only need just the one here um but this this secondary one normally when i have a three splitter i have leds lit into my panel so one of these could be one of these is going to be into the um the, the, the VS display adapter, one of these is going to be for the marquee, and the other one would be for the LED. And then the bottom side, this is all going to be powered by the same stock 12 volt adapter that comes with your arcade one up. So that one power supply is going to power up, you know, several things inside of your cab. So that's where we're going to wire up. So I'm just going to plug this in here to that. I'm going to plug in my um, power to the display adapter there, and then I'll get this um, plugged in in just a second. So let's put this away. Let's talk about powering up the cab. All right, so powering up the cab. Power, power, power. Off subject, where did you get your t-shirt? You like the t-shirt? You like the Macross shirt? <laughs> this is a, a nod to my Macross back in the day. Um, Macross World. Macross World was my first big fandom. Derek, you like my shirt? You love the shirt, right, Derek? <laughs> um, but we used to host these conventions, and I, and I still do. If, if we ever get out of this COVID environment, I. I actually help host one of the largest Macross conventions uh, in the U.S. called uh, Super Dimension Convention, or it used to be called Macross World Convention. And this was a T-shirt that was that came from one of the early versions of Macross World Convention. So this is where I got this T-shirt from. Uh, love those guys as well. All right, so let's talk about power. Robotech. <laughs> sure, I, I love Robotech as much, but it. it it doesn't compare to the breadth of the series that is Macross. All right, so here's what I'm gonna, here's what we're gonna talk about now. So um, the inlet power module switch is is this. So if you guys haven't haven't seen this before, this is your basic basic 
inlet module switch and there's tons of tutorials on how to wire it up um, but if you're brand new to looking at this essentially this is going to this is going to plug into the outside of the cab this is going to have a power cord running out of it this is going to turn off and on and then what i've done is i took an extension cable cord and plugged it in here and then wired it up to the um uh to to the inlet module switch as well and then i wired the hot wire here there's a, a, an extra cable coming out of here so i have two two wires that are coming out, essentially the two black wires coming from here. I'm gonna run two more wires out of this into the power switch on the RK1 of control panel. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna create a remote bridge connection to this. So that's that's how I'm gonna be able to connect everything. Um, so I, I people have asked me how I've done this, um, but I, I always hesitate because I, I don't have an electronics background. I don't want people to, you know, electrocute themselves, but as long as you're comfortable with kind of some basic electronics and you wire it up, like, you know, perfectly, uh, you know, this is definitely, I feel like it's safe to do, but, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Um, so that's why I haven't done a full tutorial on it, because I don't want people blaming me if, if uh, you know, something catches fire. But just, just so that you know, I didn't bring it, but the stock arcade one-up switch um, is rated at 125 volts and can carry a load of six amps. So what that means is, all the power that you're running through that switch, your PC, your monitor, like, and your your audio, you have to make sure that the, those don't draw more than six amps. Otherwise, all the power that's running through that switch could overheat. Um, but for the most part, like the stock adapter for the monitor, it runs at 12 volts, 3A. So that's that's really kind of small. Uh, and then your your PC, um, depending on what you use, I'm using a, a budget build, small form factor PC that has a 240 watt power supply, so it draws about two amps. Um, and then my, my power is being drawn with the amp or audio directly into here. So I'm running about five amps through there. Um, so I hope, hope that wasn't too technical, but if you just kind of look um, at what your switch does, I always, if you're running something electrical, it's good to know just a little bit about the background on it. Um, so, okay, so that's what I did for this switch. Here's the wires that I'm using. So I used, uh, I think this is 14 gauge wire that I'm gonna be using to run from here into the power switch here. So you can just get this 14 gauge wire in a pack from you know, Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, so there's two things that I need to do to it. Um, I've already kind of stripped two cables to it. So one of them is I'm gonna, I'm, this is a, a female connector. I'm gonna attach two uh, male spade connectors so I can insert it to this end. And then the other end that is, is behind here um, is actually, uh, it's the back of the RK one up terminal. I'll actually go grab a, a stock one so you can see it, but I'm just going to wire up. Um, I have had this kit here. So I, I have my modding tools. If you're interested in modding tools, this Perceva, uh, Feral, this wire crimping set is like a must have, I feel like. So this is the one that has kind of like these teeth here. And then this is a kind of a, the, the encoding wire crimping set. So this set here has all the different kind of male and female spade connectors. Can you guys see that? So it's like the end of an encoder wire that's gonna go into kind of the terminal. So having this is super, super handy. Um, so I'm gonna put this here and hopefully not spill it. But I need two of these tiny, small uh, female connector versions. So these tiny ones here. So I'm gonna connect two of these to the end of, of my 14 gauge wire. And that's what's gonna plug into the A1 up switch. So let's just do that really fast. Let's do that really fast. Since these are a little bit thicker too, the other thing about this, and I know I've already talked up my um, my other wire strippers, but the wire strippers are good for kind of encoder wires and, and thinner, like something that's like thick like this, I still like to use uh, the thicker go-to um, wire stripper. So make sure you use what's comfortable for you. And I was like, you know, when I first started modding, you have to use the tools that you have, right? You can't just always, uh, buy everything that looks shiny and you know I, I had to use anything that I had if you look at my first uh, heads up you're at an hour I am at an hour thanks thanks Derek I know maybe I gotta stop talking and just get it going faster um yeah I I when I was powering up my, my lights I didn't have anything to power up my LEDs so I used a, a kind of a jerry rig USB port connector and I thought it was kind of cool at the time but now I'm like there's so much there's so many tools to make things easier. If you have the, the means to get some of the easier tools, I, re I highly recommend that. So let me get my female skate connectors here. Those uh, quick disconnects are really useful if you don't want to be soldering splitting wires. Yes, absolutely, man. They, they, 
are super great to get. Um, so the, these are the ones that are non-insulated. They also have caps. These are the same things, but they already come pre-insulated as well. So, I mean, if I'm using kind of the electronics like this, I like to have the ones that have that nice insulated cover on it. And um, you, you could just put these on the cap right here and then take the your, your wire tempers. Like you could take this backside and crimp it down. But as, as always, I, I found tools to make things easier. So I found these wire fly uh, crimpers for insulated tubes because I do so many of these. Uh, if you're only doing this for a hand fly, I wouldn't buy this tool if you're just going to be doing this for one or two cats. But for me, uh, I, I'm making this power supply for, for many clients and commissions. But this is really handy because all you got to do is just hold it down there, press it down with some grip strength, and then that's nice and tight. So that's that's pretty cool. So I, I like having the right tools if you're going to be doing a lot of repetitive stuff. But otherwise, I, I can't recommend it if you're only going to use this for one or two caps. You can just use a regular plier. But I need to go quick. So let's do this. Keep it down. Boom. All right, so these are the connectors that are going to go into my inlet module switch. And the other end are going to be these two, two little tiny ones here. So let's get my teeth crimper here. I'm going to put this into the, I'm going to put it into the, the smallest one, crimp it down a little bit so the teeth is there, and then we're going to slip this wire in to the teeth so that a little bit of that is exposed. We're going to crimp down. Boom. All right, so that should be nice and tight. Uh, the, the other thing you have to do with this, this since this is the end that's going to be plugging into the Ar Arcade 1UP switch itself, um, I do add heat shrink tube around this too to make sure that it's it's completely insulated and not exposed. So you don't want to have any of the kind of that wire exposed as well if you can, since all the power and load is going to be running through these two tiny switches here too as well. All right, cool. So there's there's the connection there. Let's grab my again the I use these a lot across my mods. These um. Um, heat shrink tubes. So I got two different heat shrink tubes here that we're going to cover the disconnect as well. So this is going to go here. Just cover that up like that. This is going to cover up this side. So there. Now we have two insulated kind of small female crimpers there. And this is going to plug into the A1UP switch. Let me go get a sample of the Arcade 1UP switch so I can show you guys what it looks like because I want to be sure you guys see that. All right, thanks for folks that are sticking around. If you have to leave, no problem. Happy Thanksgiving for everybody. We're modding the Arcade 1UP Outrun cab. Um, but this is the what the stock Arcade 1UP power switch looks like. So you can see there, again, rated at 6A, 125 volts, or 250 volts at 3A as well. So I want to make sure you guys see that, because this power option, um, you know, definitely you have to understand what you're doing if you're going you're gonna to be powering this up. So there's two additional terminal connectors right underneath the ones that come on the stock side. And so I'm going to be taking the ends of that, the small crimp tubes and putting it directly into the two um, ones that are underneath the same ones that are wired up from the RK one up. So you don't have to pull these off. Just use the two that are underneath there. And then when, once that's done and everything's wired up, I'll show you what it looks like. It's going to remote power on your surge protector that's going to be inside your cab powering everything else up. So um, I'm going to go ahead and plug these in. But I wanted to show you guys this is the power kind of switch that you're looking at. So that's where your switch is rated at. So once you have that set up, then you will be able to um, turn on your entire cap using the stock power switch. And then that's going to turn on your surge protector, which is going to line up your monitor, your marquee. And then you do have to set um, an option in your PC to boot up when it detects power. So um, I'm, I do PC mods. I know a lot of folks are you know, into to, to doing Pi mods, and those are great. Um, but for, for me, uh, PCs have been at least a little bit easier for me to, to mod up and do my own custom playlist. And everything as well so that's what i prefer to use i'm, I'm going to show you guys my my launch box big box build 
I, I, I took a version of what's called my Starcade playlist, which is what I built for my Star Wars mod, and um, took out all the racing games from that and put it into a build called Racecade. So this is going to be hard for me to see. Normally, I don't wire this in the back. All right, so let me see if I can get in here. This is the joys of, of modding, where you have to get uncomfortable a little bit to do what you need to do, right? That's one. Make sure that's secure. And then the other one. Here. You know, you said pie, bad monkey. Derek, why do you hate pies? Pies taste so good. But they have their purpose, right? I mean, the pie mods out there, I still have a pie mod in my TMNT cab. I don't plan on changing that out. Like, it's super simple. So I, I love my pie. Running Keto Daiko Supreme 64 gig image on there. So I, I love it. I think it's super simple. I like it. It all has its purpose. I think all the tools, all the options out there, all the comparisons. OK, cool. All right, so um, I ran this. Oh, so <laughs> those two wires were my least favorite. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. <laughs> You know, right? I, I, I now do that for my clients instead of having them do it themselves. So um, check this out. The Outrun cab itself, look, it already comes with this panel here. So I'm just going to stick everything on here for the most part and leave the bottom part underneath here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick my PC on here for now. I probably will dismount it and decase it later and put it here. Um, but yeah, that's that's what I'm going to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick everything. Just, I'm just going to leave this here for right now because I'm going to put my power supply right here too. All right, all right. So let's grab my inlet module switch and install it into. Well, I'm not gonna. I normally take the back of here. So here's here's where you would take this now, and then this is the inlet module switch right here. So this is where I would take kind of this hole right here, and then I would carve it out or cut it out. You know, you can. You can trace it out, use kind of a, a Dremel kit, and just cut it out. Or if um, you don't have that, you can just grab pliers like I have and just kind of like slowly pry out the, the edge of this because it's, it's going to cover it. So, so this would normally stick here, and then this would go on the inside with a surge protector. But I'm not going to do that because I just want to make sure everything's wired and tested. Um, I forgot to bring a power supply for that and a surge protector. So I'm going to go run and grab the surge protector and power supply for that really quick. See me? Do you see me just hit my foot on the outward cap? Ouch! Ugh. Oh, the joys. <laughs> B, flip it. It looks better on uh, black on the other side. There's black on the other side. What are you talking about? Like, oh, like this one right here. Like flip this. This is this is just gray on both sides. So yeah, I guess you could do that. This this on the bottom side is actually black, so you could flip this if you wanted to. All right. So um, here's the inlet module switch. I'm going to plug in a regular surge protector. Uh, if you don't want to go the, the route of putting in one of these extension cables, like you don't have to do this. You could actually just cut a surge protector end and wire it up the exact same way. Um, I only do this because I like to save my surge protectors in case I want to use them for something else later on. Um, so, uh, and this just makes it easier for you to wire stuff up. So I'm going to stick this in here just like that. All right, so now I'm going to take my two cables, OK? And we're going to plug them into the female adapters that were on my inlet module switch. Gosh, I'm already over an hour. I'm so slow. I keep talking. All right. Good news is my family is still sleeping. I do not hear them awake and peeping at all. And I don't have to do my Thanksgiving lunch until, until noon. I know it's noon, so it's probably lunchtime for folks that are doing Thanksgiving lunches on the East Coast. But my Thanksgiving lunch isn't for another three hours, so I technically have 
another hour and a half before I have to start cooking. Um, I got my turkey in the sous vide. Tell me what you guys are doing for Thanksgiving. What, what, what do folks do for turkey? I'm really curious. So I, I brine my turkey for three days, brown sugar, salt, and then I have it in a sous vide bath right now, and it's going to be awesome. That's, that's what I'm doing for my turkey. You're just going to dremel the hole for that plug. Yep, yep, yep. So that's what I'm doing for my turkey. Okay. So good, good. It's plugged in. That's plugged in. Let me test this out. Heat up pizza from last night. <laughs> Do they serve turkey on pizza? Yeah? Yeah, that sounds awesome too. All right, let me plug in this cable. And then we're going to get rocking pretty soon here. We've got power set up. I'm about to plug in my PC. I said this last time on my other live stream that I would be ready to play in like five minutes. I think I'll be able to play in like at least 10 minutes if I don't keep tossing it and move it. All right, move that back. This back. You have to see my backside while I do this. I'm just going to take this off. Run around back. You know what I just realized is really stupid? <laughs> I, I've been wearing headphones this entire time, but I can't hear anything because <laughs> I'm not actually talking to anybody. So I actually don't even need to be wearing the stupid headphones for the last hour and a half. <laughs> uh, if I was, I, I, I've been used to live streaming with other people the last two days that I've been wearing headphones to make sure that I can hear them and talk, but I don't have any guests with me. So I'm just, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna stop wearing headphones. <laughs> Uh, what what a noob! I can't I can't hear anything. Maybe I'll put it back on when I need to check the sound on the computer itself. But other than that, uh, that was kind of dumb. You can see my last minutes. You might need to put an exhaust fan on the back panel because the interior space is so small. Yes, actually, um, you know, putting a PC in here, the enclosed space is really small. It's gonna get hot. So two things: like putting a stock PC and just dumping it in here without any. Um, without any kind of fan or circulation, it's going to overheat eventually. So um, I would recommend two things. I'm just going to mock it up and do it. I'm not going to do it here. I would decase the PC so that there's more airflow and then actually install um, some PC fans into the back here. So you can do a couple of ways. I've seen Bobby do a really cool thing where he uh, sucks air in from here and installs a fan on the top right here. So you can do one fan here, one fan up here that sucks the air out. Um, so you can do that, or you can put two here where it sucks the air out this way too. Um, but increasing airflow circulation uh, is definitely is definitely there. Should have kept quiet. I thought you had music played. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I wish I could have said something clever about having headphones on the whole time, but I just I, don't know, I just wanted to look cool. But you know those those fancy YouTubers with with their headsets. But these are my Sennheisers that you know. In a past life, I actually used to DJ weddings, and these were my my DJ headphones that I love. So, my past life, I was a wedding DJer. Yeah, fun times, huh? Okay, so here here we go. Oh, Chris is having turkey for lunch. Oh, prime rib. Oh, I did prime rib last night. It was so good. Okay. Um, so everything's powered up. So I, I plugged in the inlet module switch. You can see it's lit up here. So it's turned on already. But the inside surge protector is not on because now we have it wired to the stock power switch. So watch what happens when I turn on the power switch. This should now light up. Boom. All right. You see that? So I'm flipping the switch. And that is now remote turning on the surge protector inside of the cab. So this creates that remote power switch that when you turn on the switch, everything on the surge protector is going to power on. So now we have our successful sound, our power supply working. I'm going to drop the PC in just so we have it on the test mode. Get everything wired up. Let's play some games. Let's run, play outrun on the outrun cab is, is the goal. Okay, that's what we need to do. That's what we need to do. Okay. All right. Got the extension cable. Okay, so this is this is the plug from the original. Um, oh, no, 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 that's not what I need. What do I need? I need this. I need to grab the stock RK one up power adapter. Okay. So what are we going to plug into the surge protector? We're going to plug in just two things. We're going to plug in the stock um, RK one up power adapter into here. So this is going to sit in here. This is just all ugly for now. 
All right, and this is going to plug into our, our three-prong Y splitter. So there we go. So now we have the power going into there. And last but not least, the PC. So let's talk about the PC and what I'm doing really fast. So this is one of the common PCs that I use. This is a Dell Optiplex 7010. Um, so uh, check out my other tutorials for what I put, put inside. But just as a quick spec demo, this is running in a Core i5. 3470, 3.2 GHz. Um, it has 8 gigabytes of RAM, and it's running a GTX 1650 graphics card. So this is a low-profile gigabyte graphics card. It's a GDDR6 version. The graphics card is going to be your most expensive component. Usually, retails runs, runs about 160 plus tax and shipping, but it's actually sold out right now. So I don't know if they're going to come back on stock at that same price. I've only seen the 1050s, which run a little bit lower than this in stock. Um, but hopefully they'll come back and, you know, they, they release more of them and this size because this really works great for this build. Um, I also upgrade the, I take out the DVD slot because you don't need a DVD player while you're playing games. Um, so from there, I put in a 120 gig solid state drive. And then the hard drive itself is just usually the, these come with either 250, 500 gigabyte hard drives. I run that hard drive as a secondary drive in the system. Um, and I usually keep it at eight gigabytes of RAM. You really don't need to increase it to 16. I haven't seen that much performance increase from it, but that's my budget PC build. Total cost for what you see in here, the base alone, maybe about 75 to hundred bucks. This is gonna be about 175 bucks as well. And then your display or the, um, this is about 25 bucks extra uh, PC, um, um, SATA drive. So this is about $300 for the PC. And I, I know that's like way more expensive than you can with the Pi, but you can do so much more. The emulation using TechnoParrot games that you're going to see on here in just a second, um, you know, is, is super awesome. And the flexibility of using a PC. So that's that's what I'm putting in my PC. Um, that's going to be dropping in here as well. Um, you can probably build, uh, you probably use a lower end graphics card. You really don't need that super big graphics card, honestly, if you're going to run just most of the racing games. Like a GT 1030, instead of being 175 bucks, will cost you about $80 new, even cheaper. So the GT 1030 would be the lowest graphics card um, that, that I would recommend. But again, use what you have, man. Like, and anybody that always asks me, like, is this graphics card better than this graphics card? Um, I, I don't know, because I've not tested every graphics card. And all I can do is, is use my own experience and Benchmark what you have, and then upgrade the small parts that you can. That's it. So go from there. All right. So I think, I think I'm think i going to try to just prop the PC inside for right now and see if that works. So let's just prop the PC inside. Look at that. Look at that. Eventually, I know Bobby said this this, this thing is actually bowing a little bit in the middle. So I, I probably wouldn't recommend using this board and putting the PC on it long term. Like I'm, I'm, I'm putting it on the edge here so it doesn't like bow out and break. But I would replace this with probably like a thicker MDF. Like Bobby, when he does this, he takes like a half inch MDF, puts it across like this, and then that's what he uses to put this. So I, I would not recommend putting a permanent PC on, on the board that they put in here. I'm just using it uh, just for kind of tests to prop it up. All right, so let's plug in my mouse. Have any questions? Waiting, uh, big buck gameplay. All right. All right, anyone have RK one of smoking brisket on my trigger? This is how we do it in Kansas City. Oh my god, that sounds amazing, smoking brisket right now. Okay, so I got that plugged in. I got my APAC plugged in. Got my Wi-Fi adapter going. I just need one more power adapter. So this is the power that's going to go from the PC into the thing. Oh, I need an HDMI cable. I forgot my HDMI cable. How am I going to connect the PC to the power? So that's it. You need. For your PC, you just always have a wireless keyboard and mouse. That's always helpful. And then plug in. Um, I have I have Wi-Fi connected here as well. So these PCs usually don't have a Wi-Fi adapter. So then it's it's useful to have a um, a Wi-Fi card in here. So I'm going to reach back here, plug in the PC as well. Okay. I don't think I set this PC to turn on when it detects power. So I'll do that as well right now so you guys can see how I do that. All right. Look at, look at this beautiful mess. Everything is done. Everything's wired. So everything is wired right now. We changed our display adapter. We upgraded our sound. We plugged in the marquee. We got our PC. We got our power option. Uh, this is the wires from the pedals that's going down here right now. So I'm probably going to take this off the stand right now, put it back on the ground. I probably should have did that first. 
And then I'm going to power up the PC, show you guys how I set it up. And then I'm going to turn StreamYard on here so I can stream from here so you guys can see those screens. All right, so let's get going. Let's do this. Let's do this. Turn this back here. Put this out of here. We're done with the backside. Looking good. We did it, guys. An hour and 20 minutes in. Holy crap. I am so slow. Back over here. Pick up our outrun cab, put it back on the floor. Ugh. Get my workout, get my squats on. Okay. Back on the floor. Look at this custom riser that Bobby Boo made. You can replicate anything. Bobby, this stuff, man. Love having it handy for other stuff. Eventually, I think that might go on my Tron map. I have a Tron mod plan going on. Okay, so when you're done with this mod, the only cable that's running out the back that you can see now is just gonna be the, the power cord from the inlet module switch. That's it, everything else is gonna be tucked in inside. Um, so like eventually you'll cover the back of the board with this. Um, so that's it. I'm going to turn this on. So when I turn this on, we should see the marquee light up right now. Ready, ready, here it goes. On switch in three, two, one, marquee lit. That means it's working. That's that's working. Okay, so that's good. That's first good news. All right, but the PC is not set to turn on yet. Um, so that, see that the monitor turned on, which is good. This is good. No signal. This is what we normally see when we plug in a VS display adapter, so we know the board is working. I'm going to press the power switch on the PC and then turn it into the BIOS menu. And really quickly, I'll show you what I do to switch the PC to power up when it boots up. Okay, let's... Uh, Hit the power button on the PC in the back. All right, and I'm going to hold F12 on my screen. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot the HDMI cable that I said I was supposed to bring. So you're not going to see anything on the screen because I don't have it plugged in. All right, let me go get the HDMI cable. I feel like I'm so bad at this. I keep forgetting parts. Another another modding war zone here. I forgot the HDMI cable. Simple, simple, simple. I'm not gonna see anything to it. But, so this goes from a graphics card into the monitor itself. So let's do that. So let's go here. There we go. There we go. HDMI is now plugged in. OK. Did it do anything? Did it turn on? All right. All right, I might have to turn this off and then turn it back on. So let's turn off the PC and then turn it back on. Probably didn't detect the HDMI cable when I first plugged it in. So that's turned off. We're going to turn it on one more time. On. I'm going to hold down a function, F12. And we should see it boot up here in just a second. There it goes. Yeah, look at that. Beautiful. So this is our Windows boot menu. So I just held a F function F12 on this PC. So the Dell Optiplexes are a little bit different than other ones. So I'm going to go down to my BIO settings. Scroll all the way down to power management, AC recovery, and then there's an option here. And I know you guys probably can't see this because the screen is super bright, but on, on, can I see that? Kind of, kind of. No, you guys can't see it. It's too bright. Let me turn off the camera. Maybe this will help. Nope, that doesn't help either. <laughs> you guys will just have to trust me. So under AC recovery, uh, it's default to power off. You just need to check the power on state, and that's going to automatically boot up whenever your PC detects power. Um, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and hit apply. And then we're going to restart it and have it reboot. And I'm actually going to shut it down and show you guys how it reboots completely. Um, what it says, why are you blurry? B, your stream is fuzzier than Quark's. <laughs> we can't see that. <laughs> Do I feel, am I fuzzy or what? Am I, 
Is the stream quality okay? See us around the corner. All right. Uh, oh, yes, I am doing a Tron mod. Um, I, I did order virtual pinball. All right, look. Look, we're up and running. Look at my, my custom splash screen. Do you guys like that? It's the Kongs R Us race cade. Yeah, you guys dig in, dig in the logo? What do you guys think? It's low resolution right now. All right, let me see if I can change the resolution on my cam. Yeah. Um, oh, I'm using the wrong, wrong thing, that's why. Video seems low quality. What's up, Ricky? Ricky's here. Ricky is here. Cam mic settings. TSOS advanced, high definition. It just might be my internet. My internet might be a little bit slow right now. I uh, might need to let it refresh. Refresh. So hopefully it runs OK. Um, OK. So we got Maximus 5G connected. All right, I'm going to shut down my PC and then um, restart it and boot it so you can guys see that it turns on um, with the power switch. So if I'm shutting off, you normally would just shut off through any power supply that you would need to. And then once you get to this screen here, then you can flip the switch off. Okay. I'm going to let this sit for like two seconds. Oh, you know what I should have did? Oh. Mm. All right. I normally set up my computer to auto boot into Big Box, but I'll just manually go into that. So normally you can set programs to boot up automatically as well. So I have my Big Box uh, set up to do it. So that's what it, how it would normally be set up. But let's do it. All right. You guys ready? So now everything's turned off. All the power supplies plugged into that one single power switch. And then now we got to do is hit this. Uh, uh, came for the skin. <laughs> Time to get that gigabyte frontier. Dan, tell tell Verizon to get here. I only have uh, so Verizon. No, I have AT and T. I don't have gigabyte. I only have forty five megabytes per second. I'm sorry, so it's not that great. Okay, turn Wi Fi off on your PC mod. Oh, well, I, I have to. This is what I'm 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 streaming off of. So is it is it that bad? Is it really fuzzy? Is it super super bad? Let me check my internet speed test right now to see. All right. I don't know. I don't know how to make it more better. Internet speed test. Oh, I see it. I see it from YouTube now. I don't know if there's anything I can do. All right, YouTube edit. It's around 240p right now. Hmm. Let me try disconnecting my camera and then reconnecting. My other one. I have a Logitech HD ProCam here, so um, it went to crap like 20 minutes ago. It must be my connection. Heavily pixelated. All right, let me try adding in another camera to see if that fixes it. Because uh, like on StreamYard, it looks fine, but I guess I'm not see seeing it live streaming. Super pixelated, I see. OK. Let me, let me plug in the camera and see if that makes a difference. OK, hold on one second. Let's do this. Got to cut, cut for a second just to see if I can switch cameras and see if that makes a difference. Right. Right. Is that better? Can you see? All right. Did that did that change anything at all? Why I stream you on YouTube? Is it better? How is it? Yes, yay nay. I think it looks better. I'm using a better quality camera. So I probably should have started from the beginning using this one. Looks great. So much better. All right, cool. So use use Logitech hardware because I was using my old HD framing. 
All right, looks perfect now. All right, cool. So I'm using my Logitech uh, 922. Uh, probably should have used this earlier. Sorry, sorry for the bad, bad stream. Okay, so we're ready. Okay, here we go. We're gonna flip it on. It's gonna turn everything on directly, and uh, flip the switch. Marquee lights up. It's gonna auto boot and turn on the PC as well. So you can see uh, the monitor lights up automatically as well. Now we can see that Macross crap. You mean this Macross beautifulness here? Derek, all right, so the Windows logo popped up. And then again, you can set your PC. Uh, it still says Star Kit. I'm going to change it to Race Kit. And this is going to boot up to a regular Windows menu. So, oh, now that it detects, uh, now that it detects, um, it's detecting internet. So I need to get rid of this. Normally, this will not show up. I don't want to remind me in three days. Stop. OK. Anyways, here's my race, console Rust Race Kit logo. This is my theme that we have going on here. I'm going to log into OBS, right? Or not OBS, to StreamYard from this computer. So that way I can stream from this computer so that you guys can see it on the stream too. So yeah, let's do that. Uh oh, seems bad again. Oh no. It's better than before, but it went to low resolution. It's probably the bandwidth. Must be my internet. I'm sorry. I don't think there's anything I can do about that. I don't have anything else that's uh, running. Uh, here, maybe I can change the stream's uh, camera settings and see if that helps. So show advanced, high definition, standard definition. Let's do this. Did this help? As long as I don't move, it's OK. Did that change anything at all? I changed the, the definition setting. Switch to net zero or Juno. <laughs> oh my god, Raymond. How do, you, how do you keep bringing me back to the days, man? You keep, keep bringing me back. I right, don't move. All right. Oh yeah. So enter without a camera. I'm gonna enter without a camera. All right. I need to mute because the mic it was picking up the sound from here. All right. So let's or let's turn off the mic. I don't want to. I don't want the mic playing. So no mic access. Speaker access. Echo cancellation. All right. So let's let's add this user to the stream. Okay. You need to connect the mic cam before you can add to yourself to the stream. Really? Okay. Audio. What was doing earlier? Couldn't find a microphone. It's possible you don't have one plugged in. Maybe you have to plug like a headset or a microphone in here. I wanted to make sure I can like stream the actual thing instead of just showing the picture of it. So let's see if I can get that. I want to, I want to do this right. I'm sorry for the delay. Let's see. Let's plug in the secondary one. I just grabbed another webcam just so that it can detect something. All right. Setting up a device. Let's go to the mic camera setup. All right. How do I allow, allow camera access? Let's do that one more time. All right, thanks for joining, guys. An hour and a half in. We're almost, almost there. Cam mic settings, audio. How come it says no mic camera access? Oh, allow. There it is. Allow. There it is. Default microphone camera. Good. Good, good, good. That's working. The broadcast studio. All right, we're in business. Add screen. Screen. Share, Share screen. screen. Boom. Boom. There, there we go. go. Now you guys can see. Yeah. How's that? Does that look good? Yeah. You guys can see me now. You can see the main window. Looking good, looking good, looking good. You guys ready? You guys ready? All right. Yeah, yeah. Look at that worn out seat already. This is true. I bring the cat in. It's Karma telling you to put the headphones back on. All right, cool. All right, so here it is. Raymond, I need your Photoshop skills, man. I, I've been playing with Photoshop and, and messing around, but I'm nowhere near as good as you are. I miss you. All right, turn, turn off the mic, mic on the second camera. Oh, okay, good call. 
Good call. Good call. Hide. Is that better? Better, better? Turn one mic off. Better, better? Yes, 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 yes. I muted myself. All right. Good? Thumbs up? Thumbs up? Yeah? Sounds better? All right. I think it's good. I think we're good. I think we're good. Much better. Okay. So now I got to do two things. I got to check to make sure that my pedals work, and then we can do gameplay. So USB game controllers. So there's my APAC. There's my wheel. Look, wheel to the left wheel to the right, boom, boom, boom. They got my buttons. I think this is my button one is this button right here. This is, uh, what's two? One, two, three. And then I made this the 10 buttons to make it coin and that's start. Okay, perfect. And then let's get into my pedals. So my pedals are registering. Oh, I might have to remap my pedals. Let me turn this towards me a little bit so I can sit properly and press pedals. All right. That's going down. That's going left. All right. Oh, so maybe I didn't apply the last time. So that's the only thing about the pedals. I still might have to play around with the pedal settings, uh, but I want to see if I can get them so that they're centered more. Um, let's use this. This is the one that I need to use. OK, so I'm going to go into my settings test, calibrate. All right, so we're going to go over. This way, this way, that way, up, down, on, Okay. Okay. All right, so I left it in there. Oh, why don't I go back to center? How do I do that? Maybe I'll be able to get it to play without it. Let me see. Let me see. All right, I think I still need to calibrate it. Let's do it one more time. Calibrate. All right, so I'm calibrating my pedals right now. This is the weird thing about the pedals. Since they're kind of like in, in the up, down, left, right slot, they're not like reading as like standard pedals that would just be like the z-axis rotation and I don't think I can edit the APAC to register that way so we'll see oh oh you know what I think I inverse my pedals cancel I think I inverse them but that's okay no I don't want to do that Maybe I'll just test it and see if I can just map that down axis so that it registers there. So we'll we'll see how it works out. The the red pedals are registering, but I gotta I gotta mess around with the settings. All right, so let's go into lunchbox. And um, I do need to map some games first before I play, just to kind of show you guys. So I'm gonna spend a minute or two just doing some basic mapping. Um, but should we do should we do um, outrun? Yeah, outrun two. Oh, no, all right, it's doing that. It's doing the mouse thing again. I gotta unplug the APAC for a second. All right, uh, that's there. Let's unplug the APAC for just a second. I'm gonna disable mouse mode in here. So options. I'm using a different PC than I was yesterday or two days ago. So I need to disable game controllers from the launch box menu. And then I should be able to plug my APAC back in. All right. APAC is in. Look at this. All right. So let's go to Techno Parrots. So I make, I created a custom playlist for um, for just all the Outrun games. And I made, I made a playlist video. So I'm excited to share that with you guys in just a second. OK. So let me go to Techno Parrots. So uh, when you get any sort of front end that you want to play any of these games on, uh, then you do have to remap all your games first. So these are all my Techno Parrot games that are on here. Uh, so I'm only just going to map a handful. So let's just do, um, let's just do Outrun. So I'm going to turn off my Joy to Key settings and just run everything off of that for right now. Um, or actually, yeah, I don't know. Do you guys want me to show me? Uh, I'll just run it off of this for right now because normally there's a way for me to exit. I, get, I can map a way to exit you know, using this button command system, but I'm not going to go into that right now. 
All right, so I'm going to map my wheel to the left. Oh, so it's disabling this too right now. Okay, there. All right, so that's the wheel access. So, all right, I want gas to be that. I want brake to be this. I want my view change button to be this button. So yeah, the, the thing is, is messing up my settings. So it's, it's registering as an up and left setting. So I might have to, I have to fix that first in the calibration mode settings. Or I can just get rid of these pedals and plug in real pedals. That's the other thing I was going to do. Look, my next video, guys, I'm going to be ripping out this, this pedal anyways and seeing how I can install this, this PS3 Logitech wheel that already has force feedback in the wheel. So I wanted to see if I can just mod the hardware and stuff. But in another video, I'm going to take this off, mount it in. I'm tired of these pedals. I'm tired of these outrun pedals, man. Pedals stink. All right. All right, I gotta calibrate it so it goes into the center. Calibrate. All right, uh, go back. So I have to like pretend that I'm in the center right now. And then I have to go down, left, right. Okay, and then here. Okay, so now it's kind of centered, no? Oh no, that's not what I want. All right, calibrate, that's centered. All right, go to next, that's centered. Okay, there, at least it's going in the opposite direction. It's really jumpy right now though, so I mean the pedals, I have to play around with them, but they're jumping all over the place. Okay, at least it's centered now, not registering. Okay, so controller setup. So we got our gas. That's our gas button. This is our brake. At least it's not registering. View change. View change is gonna be that button right there. Button nine, gear shift up. We'll do that. Gear shift down, we'll do that. Start button will be here. And coin button will be here. So that's outrun. That's outrun. SPS2. Let's do the original version of outrun. So let's just make sure I map those controls. So that's just running that. This is just running main, main version of outrun. Oh, did it load? It didn't load. Why didn't it load? Oh, no. There it goes. All right, this game's controls, that's the gear shift. We're gonna make gear shift up and down. Paddle is this. And then paddle decrease, paddle increase, pedal analog. Okay. All right, so let's do paddle analog on this one. And then pedal analog is this one there. And then coin is here. And then start is this one. All right, so let's let's do that. All right, I have two games mapped out. I'm going to do the original Outrun, and then I'm going to do Outrun 2. B, you better be putting Outrun 2 2006 on there. It is. Look, Outrun 2 2006 is right here. Is right here. I have that same Logitech wheel. All right. Check it out. We're going to go straight into our, our launch box build now, but I have to double check and make sure you can hear my audio. So let me, let me just end this section and then do share screen with audio because I want you to hear my playlist. All right. So let's do share screen, share audio. All right. Here it is. This is what I've been waiting for. Share screen. There it is. All right, let me let me mute this side so you can hear the intro of my race cave playlist. This is it. Hour and 45 minutes in, we're ready.
that was so anticlimactic. I thought I was launching Big Box, and then I had to install this this Visual C plus thing first. I was like, ah, oh, it made me want to do an update. <laughs> oh my god, people that have been waiting here so long. Fifty seven viewers. Thanks guys for sticking around on a Thanksgiving morning. My family still isn't awake yet. They're still sleeping in. Man. All right, but I'm glad. I, all right, we're gonna be able to end this stream under two hours for sure. Um, but I'm just updating my launch box, big box build right now. All right. There we go. Got to run direct X. Did I not install all this stuff? I thought I installed everything on here. Man, I thought I did earlier. Maybe it's maybe it, it did the the launch box update on me secretly. Up, oh, is it going? Out. All right, sorry. Can you guys hear me okay now? Yeah. Is that better? All right. Let me let me mute this other one. I'm gonna use the audio and mic from the second camera instead. Can you guys hear me? Sorry for the echo. Is that bad? Is this better? Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay. All right. I think I fixed it. I think I fixed it. All right. So we're gonna go back into my launch box, big box build one more time. So I made a custom, again, uh, intro playlist. Oh, it did, that's what happened, launch box updated on me. All right, so let's go back into it. I, this is my my launch box, big box build. So again, uh, so I just all the videos now. So playlist, I get my copyright, I got my outline. Let's turn down the volume on here because it's super loud. But okay, so now I have now I have this going. Um, but yeah, I have to mess around with the settings because it's registering my pedals right now, and I need to undo that. Controller mapping. Controller. I need to use this one. Okay. All right, so here's what I did. All right, now that you can see everything, cool. I'm using my shifter to move the, the kind of menu up and down. So these are all the playlists that I have set up. So here is my, my OutRun playlist. So I made a custom OutRun playlist that has kind of a clear logo for OutRun with the modern car and then the old car. These are the five OutRun games that I have on here. You got OutRun, Turbo OutRun, OutRunners, and then this is OutRun 2006, which is the PS2 version. And then I have OutRun 2 SPSDX on here, Techno Parrot. So we'll jump into this playlist here. I'm using a big box build. I had all, all five of these games, but since the original OutRun cab had Power Drift on here, I included Power Drift onto this playlist as well. So I have the original four games on here, plus these two extra, you know, OutRun games. Um, so that's what the playlist looks like. 
Um, but uh, I also have all these other games. So I have Ride and Roll. I have all these crazy taxi games I have on here. Um, so I can play all these ski racing games. We'll have to see if it works well on here. But I have Crazy Taxi. I have 18 Wheeler. I have all these other fun games on here that I can play. Harley Davidson. So I'm exiting back here. Got uh, Batman on here through the Ride and Shoot. So Spy Hunter in those games may not work, play well because of the yoke and a bunch of Mario Kart. So I have to remap all of these games to work with the pedals. I haven't done that yet, but I wanted to show you an example of my race cave playlist with the background, kind of like that. And look at this, you saw this? You saw this menu? Looks, looks clean, right? You guys like it? Clean, looking clean. Hopefully hope you guys like it. All right, uh, I Wangan, Midnight, Initial D on there. I do have Initial D. Uh, Wangan, I probably will be adding on there, but Initial D is on there. All right, let's get into OutRun uh, 2. You guys can see it. All right. Whoops. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. I'll run to SPSDX launching play. There it is. I spent time doing the launch menu screen, so it has the fan art in the background. Man, Techno Parrot is already running. Seems to be one of the oh, I forgot that I had it open while I was mapping. All right. Hope it'll open now should open now all right it's running it's running we're ready we're about to play actual outrun on the outrun cab i'm gonna turn this towards me a little bit turn it Mission. Outrun mode. Flash wave. Get ready.
very low. You can barely hear. Oh, but it is working. Audio. Maybe I have to like eat my mic. Can you guys hear it? If I like eat the mic, turn the mic on the SD on the SD cab. All right, I'll turn that one back on. All right, we're gonna switch back to the other one. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. The audio's back. Sorry for the 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 the, the snafu, but uh, I think I think that's cool, right? You guys saw the the potential of everything that was running on there. So I mean, I have Outrun two. I know that's the only gameplay that I've been kind of testing out, but like it's a pain to map everything live. Um, but hopefully, you guys kind of um, uh, enjoyed the whole modding process from start to finish. We modded the pedals and the wheels we got it to register via usb you can saw that i still had issues with the pedals i'm gonna have to tweak and play with the pedal settings if i really wanted to use the stock pedals but you know honestly i think i'm gonna be replacing that no matter what like the, the stock pedals right now are are not great feeling i have some thrust masters right over here and i also have this logitech wheel that i probably will be you know trying to mod this next so i can get force feedback into this directly um so let me make myself bigger so that we can, um, there we go. There we go. I'll just do this so you guys can see it. Is that better? All right, we'll just keep it bigger. I can stop screen sharing on the other one too. So you guys can just do some final thoughts on the on the race gauge so you guys can see. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's what I plan to do is just mod this up using the Logitech wheel so I can actually get the force feedback in here. So that'll be the next mod. Other future mod potential, I'm going to be doing uh, Ralph's transducer mod to be able to get the rumble in the seat. Um, probably going to add the transducer into this big guy here. Oh my goodness, look. I got a cruise and Exotica chair. So we're going to be adding the transducer into that, seeing how well that runs and plays. Um, but that'll be a future mod video going on. Um, I think I'm going to call it, going to start cooking some turkey stuff. So I really appreciate you guys joining in. Uh, have a happy Thanksgiving, happy Turkey Day to y'all. Um, you know, I really appreciate all the, the folks that have been joining and supporting from the very beginning. Big shout out to Mario Curry Wizards group out there. Happy Thanksgiving. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll catch you guys next time. Uh, probably we'll do something this weekend. See if I can map up some more controls. Let me know if you want to see something specific uh, on a live stream. So uh, we did it. We have the Kongs of Rust race cade going on. Look at that. That's, that's what it's going to be now. Sorry. Sorry, Outrun. You no longer have the nicest interface now. It's going to be my race cake. Cool. Thanks. Thanks, Brad. Thanks, Raymond. Appreciate everybody. <laughs> final thoughts? No, I don't have final thoughts. Anybody can have final thoughts. All right. Talk to you guys later. Bye. Let's end this broadcast.